glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. We can't, we can't do it without you. We can't even live like you want us to live without you. So much going on in the world today, but you make the difference. Thank you, Lord, for sitting on the throne of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for, for never leaving us nor forsaking us. So no matter what, what comes, no matter what happens, I'm going to lift you up. I might have tears in my eyes, but I'm going to exalt you. I might have pain in my body, but I'm going to exalt you. I might be in the middle of the greatest hurt and betrayal of my life, but I will exalt you. You're my hiding place. You're where I go when I can't figure it out. You're where I go when I'm about to lose my mind. You're, you're my hiding place. There's safety in your presence. That's all we'll ever need is your presence. Glory to God. That's all we want right now is your presence. Everything else in life just seems to fall in line when we get this priority and make this first place your presence. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Oh, my goodness, glory to God. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name. Like they used to say in the Baptist church, ain't he all right? Huh? <laughs> Ain't he all right? <laughs> Won't he make a way for you? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Oh, my goodness. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Oh, wow. I don't know about you, but I, I just, I, to me, I, I, over 40 years of ministry, and it is, uh, it is his presence that makes the difference. It is his presence. That's what it's about. Everything else in life, really, you know, when you have him, you, you got everything you need. When you, when you place value on your relationship with God and his presence in your life, dude, you good. Come what may, but God's got your back. Amen. God will take care of you. Amen. Say it out loud. God will take care of me. Amen. Woo. I was about to have a moment there for a moment. Man, let's go uh, to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Last week we began to talk about fear and how it gives birth to darkness in the lives of people. And we'll be dealing with this subject throughout the uh, month of December as we prepare to go into 2022. And we're not going into 2022 fearful. Did you hear what I'm saying? No, it's, it's, it's that's... We have, we, have, we have an almighty God. We ain't got no chump backing us up. We have an almighty God. Amen? And God will perfect everything that concerns you in the name of Jesus. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Let's read it out loud together. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Now, it's, it's pretty clear here, you know, that, you know, fear is more than a figment of our imagination or something that can be overcome merely by exercising willpower. 
The world would have us to believe that it is a normal part of life, that fear is a normal part of life. However, there is nothing natural or normal about fear, and it should never be tolerated on any level. You hear what I just said? It should, fear should not be tolerated on any level. In fact, I'll go so far as to say that fear is a cancer that, uh, that's affecting people from all walks of life. It is a spiritual force that is designed by the enemy to steal, to kill, and to destroy. One of the things we looked at last week was the fact that, you know, God hath not given us the spirit of fear. So stop making it a part of, you know, don't, don't look at it as, well, fear is normal and fear is natural because the day you, you know, conclude that, you know, fear is okay, then that's the day you will tolerate it. And fear will come in on what I see as an innocent level, you know, the fear of heights, the fear of, of, of space and all that kind of stuff, only to get a foothold in there and begin to affect you on greater levels. So you've got to be careful not to, in your mind, think it's natural and that it is normal, and then you end up tolerating fear. Because when you tolerate fear, Satan now has a foothold into your life. He has a foothold in your life. Somebody says, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with a little fear. That's just like saying there's nothing wrong with a, a, a little adultery or a little murder. <laughs> no. You've got to recognize how the enemy operates, just trying to get just a little foothold in there, and they, then later on take, take advantage of what you open your life to, and then it, it graduates and begins to torment you. Fear is the faith of the devil. Pick the phone up and tell them you're busy right now. <laughs> Fear is the faith of the devil. Now, what do I mean by that? God needs faith. The kingdom of God operates by faith. And without faith, uh, what, God, what Jesus has made available, it won't come to pass. See, we're saved by grace, but we get it through faith. Everything in the kingdom of God operates by faith, okay? And so what we understand is that, I'll teach this morning if we get to it, we're going to talk about the laws of reciprocals, that, that, that uh, faith has a reciprocal, that's an inversion. Uh, a direct opposite. Uh, north and south, there are directions uh, on, the, on, on the compass, but they're opposites of one another. And so, like faith operates for us that believe God to turn on the life cycle, the opposite or the, the, the reciprocal of faith is fear. And so, like God needs faith in order to bring his word to pass, Satan needs fear in order to bring his word to pass. When you operate in fear and you begin to mature in fear, you turn on the death cycle. And, and things start with a small, small seed, eventually leading up to destruction. When you operate in faith, it turns on the life cycle. You don't see the promises of God right away, but if you'll stick with it, then it begins to manifest. So there is a battle. Satan needs you to operate in fear. He cannot have any success in disrupting your life if you don't maintain a foundation of fear in your life. You, somehow, some way, there's got to be fear to operate in your life. And so this, this, is, this is very important because there are a lot of things that derive out of fear. For example, please understand this. Uh, if you want to practically look at fear for the Christian and see what he's trying to do to Christian people, fear is, for a Christian, fear is like, I'm trying to get you to not believe that what God promised will come to pass. The number one fear for Christian people is you are afraid that what, what God promised won't happen. You're afraid when he says, by stripes you're healed, that you're not really going to be healed. You're afraid that when he says, sow a seed, reap a harvest, it won't happen. And so if you'll notice, the enemy is saying, all right, what I'm going to do is, uh, you may not even be aware of it, but I'm going to get you to operate in fear. And ultimately what it says is, you don't believe what God promised will happen. 
Now think about that. Think about the number of times in your life, maybe it was protection, maybe it was favor, maybe it was something that you were standing on, and maybe it didn't happen when you wanted it or how you wanted it. And now the next go around, you hesitate a little bit. Watch this, you doubt a little bit based on what didn't happen before. And then as a result of it, now fear has got a foothold in there and you ultimately don't believe what God promised will come to pass. So what happens? At this particular point, you go to self. You look at self. You're going to self-preservation. Since I don't believe what God promised in his word, then I'm going to have to work it out myself. Self-preservation is based in fear. It, you, 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 you look at self thing, selfish things, you look at how you can now do it. Man, the world's full of that. How you can do it. God is no longer valued anymore because of some experience you had that you didn't understand why it turned out that way. And how about just trusting God? How about maybe it wasn't time for a certain thing to happen right now? And how about God knows about your life better than you do? He knows what's down the street, around the corner, behind the building, and you're immediately getting upset because you rubbed on the genie lamp and the genie didn't give you your three wishes. That's not how this operates. It's a relationship with God. Look at this. Uh, you're talking about turning to self. James chapter 3 and verse 16, if you will. Uh, let's look at it, the King James and the, and the New Living Translation right quick, and then we'll, we'll get into this. You know, in these sermons, I'm, I'm learning how to take my time to make sure that the Holy Spirit can infuse things that I didn't study, that can, he can infuse things that I wouldn't plan on going that way. So I got my notes and all that, but I, and, and you know, we'll get to it when we get to it. If we can tap into the Holy Ghost, then that's, that's what we want. I want, I want a word from the law, the Lord, excuse me. <laughs> all right, he says, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Somebody says, well, what does that have to do with fear? Look at this in the New Living Translation now. Same, uh, James chapter 3, 16. He says, for... Wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, wherever there's jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. Anything that's based in selfishness is rooted in fear. Selfishness is fear-based. You don't trust God to preserve you. So you move out of fear into self-preservation. You don't trust God to provide for you, so then a man will go and steal. You don't trust God for a, a lot of things, and what happens is when you don't trust God for it, then all of a sudden you are afraid to trust God. You are afraid to believe that promise can come to pass, and you turn towards self-preservation. But see, here's the problem. Wherever there is selfish ambition, you're going to find jealousy. He says you will find disorder. You will find evil of every kind, and all of that is based in fear. It's based in fear. The number of wickedness and the evil things we see in the earth right now, it's fear-based. And Satan's trying his best to cover it up. He doesn't want you to see very clearly that this is based in fear. He, he, you know, he wants us to just say, fear is defined fright. Oh, you made me afraid. There are lots of things that are based in fear. You know, anger is based in fear. When you get angry and start cussing folks out, you know, you said you buried the book of cuss when you got born again, and somebody made you mad, and you went outside in the back and dug up the book of cuss, and you turned to page 666. <laughs> That's fear-based. That's based in fear. I need you to think about the number of things you might be yielding yourself to that are rooted and based in fear. Ultimately, it says, I don't believe God. I am now, I am now placing a greater value on what I can do for myself than what God can do for me. It's all based in fear. I was amazed to see that anger was based in fear. I just thought I had an anger problem. And now I found out I had a fear problem. Anger was just expressing my fear. It's based in fear. 
There are lots of things you're doing that's based in fear. You will tolerate a toxic relationship because you're afraid that that might, that might be the only person that you'll ever have a potential of marrying. So you'll put up with stuff that if you were in faith, you wouldn't put up with. But fear allows you to put up with a lot of toxicity in your life, a lot of junk that you wouldn't put up with if you've trusted God. You know, you, you, you don't, your identity is under attack. You don't believe that you're righteous. You don't believe you're forgiven. You don't believe that you are who God says you are. And so I'm afraid, therefore, I'll choose these other things and make it even more toxic. Honey, let me tell you something. Whoever you are afraid to stop dating, believe me, he or she is not the only one. You just fear they're the only one. She, she, he or she not the only one. Now, that means you, men, you can't be afraid to approach people and, and keep going, but a lot, of, a lot of men are afraid to approach women because they can't, they can't, you know, get over the rejection and the hurt they had from the last one. And so what you've done, you've opened, you've allowed the, the, a door, you fear to come in. And now fear is governing it. Well, I'm scared. No, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're fearful. You're, you're afraid of rejection. You're afraid of, you know, I, I, I became uh, 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 vulnerable, and that vulnerability hurt me, and, and I don't want to do that no more. So every time you look at a woman, if she reminds you a little of the one that hurt you, you, you back up, you ease in too slow. By the time you get there, she married. <laughs> All right, I'll leave y'all alone. In essence, what, what we're looking at here is fear is the foundation of darkness. And when I use darkness, it is, it's when you can't see and understand the light of God's Word. You're living life in darkness, and you just can't figure it out. You're in a toxic relationship, but you just can't see it. You don't know what to do about it. You just feel bad. Uh, you can believe God, but you just can't see how you can believe God. God can change everything about you, but you, you're in darkness. You, you don't know how. You don't, you don't know. You, don't, you, you, don't, you have no word. You, you stop going to church once you, you got old enough to leave grandmama and your mama, and, and, and you, you're in darkness. You think you're in, you, you think you're in, you, you think you are in involved in intelligent movement in your life. And you're dark. All you're doing is paying attention to what everybody else is doing, and you think that's light and enlightenment. So you hang around people, and you know, somebody says, well, if you want to be successful, hang around successful people. Ah, be careful about that. <laughs> be careful about that. You better make sure that their success is based in the light. and not based in darkness. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And the world's dark. Uh, go to Isaiah 60 real quick. I, I haven't got started. I got to hurry and get started. Uh, <laughs> Isaiah 60. Now, I, this whole chapter 60 is talking about the Jewish people returning back to their home, and that's taking place as a prophecy. But, but <clears throat> I think I'm allowed to, to see some prophetic things in, in these verse three, in these, these first three verses. Verse 1 says, um, Isaiah 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. When I use the word light here, I'm talking about a clear understanding and awareness of God's Word and way. When I use the word darkness here, I'm talking about a misunderstanding or blindness concerning God's Word and way. And I tell you, one of the biggest sins we can have in our life is spiritual blindness. I just can't see. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I don't believe it, so I'm going all the way through with this. And then when I'm beat up, messed up, and, and, and just go through all of the stuff, I, I sit back and wonder, why did I not listen to the light? You were dark. You, you, you were afraid, and fear kept you there. It kept the darkness there, but it kept you there as well. Fear works, works very hard to maintain darkness over your life so you can't see. He don't want you to see. He talks about the light of the gospel being hid. 
so you can stay in darkness so that that light won't shine under you. Satan's working real hard to get you and keep you in a position where you don't see, where you don't understand, even where churches are concerned. You can, you, if you don't get, go to the right church, you'll be going to church thinking that suffices, and it doesn't. You go to church, and you're still dark. You're still in darkness. You, you don't know how to live. You don't know how to pray. You, you don't know how to walk in love. You don't know how to live together. You don't know nothing. nothing. You, you, you know about Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro. That's all you know. But you don't know, you don't know how to live from day to day, and you don't know how to fight the devil when he starts fighting you in your mind. There's a war going on. Then the war is to keep you dark, to keep you where you're not enlightened. You go get a degree, and now you think you're smarter than God. And you, you get some light from the Word, and the Word will still outdo everything you learned in your degree. It's the wisdom of God. The knowledge is one thing, but wisdom is how to use knowledge. Hallelujah. In other words, God's not just going to tell you 2 plus 2 equals 4. What God is going to do is he's going to show you how it works. God's going to show you what to do when your wife ain't talking to you you don't know what you did. God will show you what to do in the, in, in the middle of a, an assignment you got on the job, but you've never done it before, but you believe you got the equipment on the inside to do it, and then the Lord starts talking to you, and then they want to promote you again. Honey, there's coming a time in the life of wise people where you're going to be able to go in and state your salary, and they'll give you exactly what you say you want to pay for. The Word is the wisdom of God. It, it's, 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 the Word is the enlightenment that'll show you what to do when you don't know what to do. How many times you've been in a situation you didn't know what to do, and the light of God shined, and all of a sudden you knew exactly what to do? This is what's going to cause you to stand out. You're going to operate on a level of wisdom that you can't get through a degree. Ain't nothing wrong with a degree, but in all your getting, get understanding and get some wisdom. Get the degree, but make sure you get God with your degree. Amen. Well, I have my BS and I have my master's and I have my PhD. You better get that born again degree. <laughs> that word wisdom degree. I'm a WW. What's that? I got the word and wisdom. <laughs> but you can't, you, they go together. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So the world's dark. It, you know what? You know, you know. You know, when you can realize that the world is, is really, really dark, uh, it's when they don't think they're in darkness. It's when the light shines and they would rather have the darkness instead of the light. I'll show you that in the coming weeks. That's the scripture. God says, it's coming a time when I will present the light and they will decide, no, I want the darkness. We're there. This is not coming. We are there. And Satan's doing everything he can because he knows his time is short. And he knows Jesus is coming back. And he knows he doesn't have long. For some reason, he keeps telling himself, because he's dark, he keeps telling himself he can win. And the Bible says, and God laughs. He looks at him and he laughs. It's like, there's no way you're going to ever be able to win. Yes, I that, and it can be over with, and it will be. I don't want to be in darkness and, and then realize how much I could have lived. Like, you know, some people, they get, they get married, a spouse goes on, and then tradition and religion says you can't get married anymore, or you'll dishonor your husband, or you'll dishonor your wife. They're dead. You should go hunting that day. <laughs> The Bible says, till death do us part. So when death do you part, go find another part and learn how to live your life. Because God does not congratulate you for maintaining the pain for the rest of your life. God wants you to learn how to live. He wants you happy. He wants you happy. Now, if you're satisfied with staying single all the rest of your life, 
Praise the Lord. But I know if something happened to me, I know what Taffy's going to do. Sell everything, go on a trip, marry somebody. <laughs> She's going to be like, he dead. <laughs> and I told her, I said, if there's any vision that hadn't come to pass, don't try to finish something that God told me. I'm dead. Now you got to go before God and ask him what he wants you to do. If I started the building and I'm not around to finish it, tear it down. Do what God tell you to do. We have a wrong perspective on that kind of stuff. Now, see, my wife kind of scared me. She says, now, if you get married again, I'm going to hunt both of y'all. <laughs> and I believe her. So I say, if you do that, I'm going to bury you in the backyard <laughs> above ground so I can come and check in on you every now and then. Make sure you... <laughs> You know what God wants more than anything? He wants you to enjoy your life. Enjoy it. Be happy. Listen, when people go home to be with the Lord, you may have to rearrange some things. They're, 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 you're used to doing this one thing. Now you got, to, you got to figure out how to fill that spot. How do I fill that time? What do I do with this situation? But don't just, don't just sit and rot away waiting to die thinking it's honorable because somebody told you you can't get married no more ever again and if you do people gonna be mad at you forget the people they, they, they got somebody but you upset with me because i decide i'm gonna get married again mm -mm -mm. he ought to be ashamed of himself see you in the dark the marriage covenant is over at death i can go hunting <laughs> Now, I'm going to have to fix myself up just a little bit. <laughs> well, how old she going to be? That ain't none in your business. <laughs> if my rap work, then hey, praise God. Amen. <laughs> now, I ain't doing no 20-year-old, because ain't nobody wake, wake me up at no 4 o'clock in the morning talking about we going to the Beyonce concert. Who? Oh! <laughs> God don't be waking me. What? Just like you're laughing right now, God wants you to have a good life. He wants you to have a happy life. He wants you to rejoice. He wants you to have some fun. He wants you to go hiking, go to amusement park, go to the circus, eat some popcorn every now and then, get your Snickers bar. He wants you to enjoy life. He don't want you to go around deep and sad. Yeah, you talking to all the young people. Uh, if, listen, if you like 81, and you see a, a, a 80-year-old twisting, <laughs> I ain't gonna do that. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Amen. Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, the whole earth against God. And gross darkness is going to be on the people. Imagine gross darkness on the people. They don't have a clue. They're not going to church, and the church they're going to, unfortunately, he or she don't have a clue. Maybe, hopefully that's not the case, you know, overall. He said, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. His glory is going to be seen upon thee. Verse 3, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. You know what God says to me? He says, those of us who will stay in the light or get back in the light. There are too many, there are too many world changes in the dark. You ain't been to church in so long, you were in the dark. You ain't been to church, then you started listening to the stream, and now you stopped listening to the stream, and now you just, you just replaced church with something else. And you think you're all right because of your past knowledge. It's got to be current right now. You know what revelation is? It's, it's, it's right now knowledge. You need a revelation on what to do today. You need a revelation on how to handle tomorrow. 
It ain't based on what you already know. That you, that'll, that'll fool you. you. You start living off past knowledge. You need to know something for right now. God is a right now God. Boy, that's real Baptist, ain't it? He's a right now God. <laughs> I believe God's going to use you. I believe that the light of the gospel is in the love of God will rise on you, your attitude being affected by the anointing, the presence of God as we come and gather together. Satan has been after our gathering. He wanted to break up our gathering. He's still trying to stop us from gathering because there's power in that one sound of prayer. There's power when we lift our hands up and we worship God. There's a sound that comes from this building. Hallelujah, that, that no place on the planet can make like the church of Jesus Christ. And we make a sound that all Oh, hell got to back up. We make a sound that demons got to bow to. We make a sound that angels give attention to, and heaven receives that sound. He's against our oneness. He don't want us to come together and agree as one. Well, you can do that through technology. Honey, there's, I, I, I thank God. Listen, I thank God for technology. I thank God for streaming. I thank God for all that. But boy, when I can come together and feel it. I know you can feel it through the stream. I felt it through the stream. But then when I got here live and y'all, when y'all came back, my stream preaching went from stream preaching only to the oneness of a few people that gathered together. If I was on the stream, I'd have been finished this series like last week. But it's the pulling. It's the stuff I sense when I come in here and I look at your face and the Lord will say this to me and say that to me and, and then I change that or I and, 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 and it's something it's just something about it I don't have the intricate details of what goes on but when God when God's children get together the Bible says where two or three shall gather in his name there am I in the midst of thee God is in the midst of us right now God is in the midst of us right now And you're safe in his presence. I wish the Omicron would try to come up in his presence. You're safe in his presence. Look at Isaiah 12, 16 in the ESV version. Isaiah 12, excuse me, Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42, 16 in the, e, in the ESV version. Watch this. Oh, goodness. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, the light is rising on you. As things are changing, God going to show you how to do what you need to do. Glory be to God. God going to show you how to, God, God, God is going to show you how to prosper in bad times. Watch this. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, in paths that they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. I gotta read that again. Y'all, 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 see, see the Lord, Lord, Lord is saying, you might be in darkness. You might be in darkness. World changes wherever you are. You might be in darkness. But here's what he said, I'll lead the blind in a way they do not know. Glory be to God. In other words, God said, even though you're blind, I'm going to lead you in a way you don't understand. He says, I know how to get the light in. I'm going to lead you in a way you do not know. I'm going to lead you in paths that, have not, that you have not known. In other words, get ready. We're getting ready to, we're getting ready to walk down avenues we have never walked down before. Everybody else has done it this way. I'm telling you, you ain't got to follow everybody else. God says, I'm getting ready to show you a path you've never seen before. I'm getting ready to take you down a path that you've not known before. 
And he says, now what happens when you go down a path you don't know? You don't want to know where to go. He says, that's all right. I will guide them. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, well, what about the darkness? He says, I'll turn the darkness before them, in, before them into light. God's getting ready to turn darkness into light. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know who bears you in. I don't know who you're talking to. I don't know what you stole. But I tell you, God is working. There's an eagle stirring in the nest right now, and he's turning your darkness into light. I got to believe that. And start praying that for your friends and your relatives. Lord, I thank you that you're turning darkness into light. I'm telling you, he can do it. I don't know how to do that, but he can do it. And when God turns darkness into light, you're going to be like that Baptist deacon. Won't he do it? Won't he make a way for you? Excuse me. I done got excited. I done got excited because here go God doing something that I can't do. See, I, that's why I can't depend on human beings because God, God is God all by himself. Don't, don't, don't ever think God really needs you to do what he want to do. God can do what he want to do all by himself. Hallelujah. He still sits high and looks low. He's still the almighty God. He's still Jehovah Jireh. He's still Jehovah Makedesh. God can do whatever he wants to do. And I'm going to trust him. He's going to turn darkness into light. Now here's what I like. How many of you ever have some, how many, ain't no, how many, everybody have. How many, how many of you have experienced some rough places? Over these last two years, you've experienced some rough places. Now hold on to this one now. The rough places, he says, I'm going to put it on level ground. Now, here's the promise. These are the things I do. Oh, glory to God. And I do not forsake them. I'm telling you, God's at work on your behalf right now. Don't you quit. Don't you quit because you don't see it right now. You stay hooked to him, he's going to stay hooked to you. This thing's getting ready to happen. This is where, this is where you're going to see souls being saved like never before. When they see God turn it all around for you. When they can't understand why you ain't in your rough place no more. What happened? Somebody forgot to tell me. What happened? You say, baby, I've been telling you the whole time. It's God. I've been telling you God is good, not because I'm good, but God's just good, and I just trust him. I, I know I ain't there yet. I know I got a lot of stuff going on, but God is good, and I'm going to stay hooked up to that good God because I need that good God. Look at St. John 1 and 5 in the ESV. St. John 1 and 5. Hallelujah. I believe I done preached myself happy. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I don't like all the hollering and screaming. God, please. I, I, when you know Jesus and you are in his presence, and if he's ever delivered you out of anything, if he's ever delivered you out of a ditch, if he ever delivered you out of sickness and disease, if he ever delivered you out of debt, if he ever delivered you out of a toxic relationship, you better learn how to shout and you better learn how to praise him because he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, somebody. He's worthy. My God. My God. So forgive me if I done stepped away from proper for a moment. I can't get it out of my head how, how when I was sick, he healed me. I can't get it out of my head that when I was in deep depth, he delivered me. I can't get it out of my head when I was broken and hurt that he made it all right and gave me peace. I got to praise him. I got to give him glory. I got to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Excuse me. Excuse me why I shout a little bit. Excuse me why I praise God a little bit. Excuse me why I lift my hands up just a little bit. Excuse me. My God. My God. My God. My God. 
I will not allow fear and darkness to keep me down when I have the light of Jesus Christ and the light of his word. Not going to do it. Now look at John 1, 5. I like to shout and praise him, but it, it, my time go by too. Let's say John, John 1, 5. I keep doing it. You're a shot on your own time. We just... <laughs> oh, man. Verse 5, he said, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can't overcome it. You might minister to somebody that's in dark, and they didn't, they didn't get saved at that point. But at that time, you might just be somebody just sowing a seed. And then somebody come after you and just water the seed. But remember, you're not the one that's responsible for the increase. God says, some plant, some water, but I get an increase. God says, I, God says, I get an increase. So keep sowing and keep watering. And keep sawing and keep watering. <laughs> the light shines in the darkness. It works. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness will never overcome the light. Glory to God. No matter how they're acting, no matter what they're doing. You dark, what you talking, what I've got is light. What I have is more powerful than what you have. And the thing about light, sometimes you ain't got to have a big old flashlight. A little bit of one still break through it. Go to St. John 8, verse 12 in, in the ESV. I'm just sticking that translation for a moment. St. John chapter 8, verse 12 in the ESV. <clears throat> Glory to God. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I don't, how do you share a scripture even, it, you can't get no plain of this. If you're in darkness, follow Jesus. There's no other way out of darkness except following Jesus. I don't care how much understanding you get of the world, you cannot get out of darkness except follow Jesus. Somebody said, <laughs> somebody says, follow him, where he at? <laughs> it's his word. Follow his word. Follow his word. Follow his light. Follow the truth. Grace and truth. Jesus is grace and truth. Grace is the truth that makes men free. Follow his word. If you follow Jesus, I'm the light of the world. Whosoever follows me will not walk in darkness. The opposite is true. Whosoever doesn't follow him walks in darkness. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about the number of people in the world who just cease to follow him. They got entangled in a bunch of principles. They got entangled with everybody trying to prosper without Jesus. They got entangled to self-ambitions, and they're in darkness and don't even know it because of all of the self-help material that's out in the world today. It should have been Jesus' help, but we don't want Jesus' help no more. We want self-help. Jesus ain't helping me quick enough. Anything you get quickly, you're going to lose quickly. There's some lessons to learn on your way to where, you, where you're going. And besides, you, 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 what is it that God's called you to do? Why did he allow you to be born on the earth to do? you just choosing something because you see somebody else doing that? They got an anointing to do it, but you don't. But you want to do it because they, it's a whole lot of money. And mammon is ruling the world. Mammon is fear-based. Mammon says, I don't need God and I don't want him. Mammon says, I value money more than I value God because I'm afraid that God can't do for me 
what money can. And so the whole world is blinded by mammon. Governments are blinded by mammon. People are blinded by mammon. I guarantee you, oh, I'd be so close to say about 90% of the issues in our world today is mammon-driven, mammon-based, which is grounded and rooted in fear. It is. You, 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 when you, you know the risk you take when you meet a new person and they say some kind thing to try to get you and you don't know them? It's like, dude, let's just get to the very end. Tell me right at the beginning, what do you want? That's what I do. All right, tell me what do you want? And you, if you lie, I'm going to know you're lying. Just tell me what you want. Oh, but the Lord just told me to serve you. For what? Why? Why? You don't know me? You, 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 why you won't tell me? Well, don't give me all that little deep stuff. I'm past. I, oh God, I can't say that. I got, let's just say I have a meter, a monitor. Yeah, for all that stuff. And you, you, you got you to be cautious. Dude coming up to a woman, he's trying to rap with you, and you're like, oh, I said, why, why, you, why you want me? Why, why you want me? Woman coming up to you, why you want me? You know, and if I was you, dude, if you do have a lot of money, you need to play broke for a minute to see if they still want you. <laughs> Get you some false teeth that look yellow. <laughs> Bad advice. <laughs> Bad advice. Ain't nobody going to talk to them you yellow teeth. You smile say, praise the Lord. They say, oh, yeah. <laughs> Follow Jesus. That's like old-fashioned. I don't want to go to no church where they're talking about following Jesus. And watch this now. I don't want to follow Jesus because Jesus was a white man. I don't want to follow Jesus because that picture of Jesus, that's just really, uh, 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 that came from a Michelangelo painting and, and, and there was a model. Well, we know that. Any kind of excuse. Well, there ain't no Jesus. It, you see where it's going? It went from Jesus being a white man, that you can't trust Jesus, to ain't no such thing as Jesus, to, all right, so who, 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 we, who we dealing with now? Watch this. <laughs> Yourself. Or you can pick out any God you want to. A higher power. Oh, you think the name going to change the fact that you devalued God? My higher power is that chair. Oh, let me see if that chair can heal you. Let me see if that chair can deliver you. Let me see if that chair can... What? It's just stupid, crazy. I'm going to follow Jesus so I can stand the light. If you don't follow Jesus and you don't follow his word, you're in darkness. I can't take that chance. I can't die and then everything the Word says comes to pass, and I am now face to face with like, oh my God, there is life after death. There is a heaven. And oh my God, I'm, I'm seeing people who've gone ahead of me, and they're there, right there. It's not like I can re-enter my body again and, and my bad God give me another chance. I can't, I can't, I won't risk that with my eternal life. Now, there are a lot of people that'll do that, but I'm not going to risk that with my eternal life. See, if, if I live for Christ and benefit from all of these things that he's done and my faith gets it to me and I'm wrong, I still live a good life. But if you don't believe in Christ and died without him, then when you leave your body and it's like, oh, wow, all this is true. And then you get up there and they call on the road and look at it and say, Dang, I thought I saw your name. Oh, they blotted it out this morning. <laughs> Dang, bro, all you had to do is just make Jesus the Lord of your life. But uh, um, they call for the Sandman. You remember that on Apollo? <laughs> dun, 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 snatch you out. And you, I, I can't risk that. I'm not doing that. Ain't no such thing as heaven. I, all right, so have you ever even went in round? 
No. Well, how you know that? Well, this book I read from my friend that gave me, see, that's dark. You're dark. You don't even know what to do. Hard times are here, and they're going to get harder. But we're going to be in Goshen and not in Egypt. Yeah. And that's, that's not even to be debated about. It's already here. There's so much wickedness going on right now that the wicked confused. <laughs> the wicked confused. Everybody confused. Don't nobody know where they are. They don't know nothing. They just, they don't, they don't know who they are. They're confused. If you ask them to explain it, they don't even know. Well, see, uh, like this, you know, see, you have to be there. No, you need to be there because you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and we are the light of the world. We have something that's so valuable now, an understanding of Jesus Christ. Yes. Share it with people. Now is the time. Share it with people. When's the last time you witnessed to somebody and prayed for them to be born again into the kingdom of God? Not just coming to church, but share it with them. There are people you know. If you love those people, stop them from going to hell. Introduce them to Jesus. When's the last time you did that? It's called soul winning. And it's not joining the department of soul winning. It's situational soul winning. It's taking somebody out for lunch for the full purpose of introducing them to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time now. It's time. It's time. It's time to pray for people in the aisle at the grocery store. It's time when you see somebody sick, lay hands on them and believe God for them to be healed. You'll be shocked the miracles that'll work at your hands. Don't come calling me, well, my cousin them sick, can you pray for him? No! Ooh. Pastor, why do you want to pray for him? You have the exact same authority that I have. Stop being such a sissy and go ahead and lay hands and cast that devil out and have your own prayer line at the hospital. Because when they see them get healed, you know, somebody else going to start walking in there, can you pray for me too? Have a revival, praise God. Have them to sue you for, for practicing uh, 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 unseen medicine without a license and then show them the Bible. Say, hey, this is my license right here. I can lay hands on the sick. I can cast out devil. That, that needs to come with you. Who are you going to bump into today? What opportunities will you have today? Let's not walk past these opportunities anymore. Too many opportunities. Well, Pastor, I don't, I don't quite know how to explain it. Well, at least you can do is pay them to come to church with you. <laughs> pay them? Yeah, they need motivation. Jesus ain't no motivation to them. Pay them, do their laundry, agree to keep the, them bad kids for a night for them to have a break or something like that. You got to do something. You got you, you, you to you encourage them and motivate them to want to come to church. And then send me a little note. Pass, I got him here. I'm like, I got you. And I come out preaching hell fine brimstone. <laughs> Which is so wrong because most of us got saved out of fear. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, well, why'd you get born again in the first place? And I thought, I was like, because uh, I didn't want to go to hell. They said, well, I ain't want to go to hell. I ain't know nothing, but I knew I didn't want to go to no hell. <laughs> then I found out and understand now more what I, what I knew before, but man, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to die and go straight to hell with their smart self. S those who s thought they were smarter than God, ain't never talked to them, ain't never seen them, to talk about what their grandmama used to do. You ain't going to heaven because what your grandma, you can't go on your grandmama's coattail. You try to hang on your grandmama's coattail. They're just going to cut it off and you, grandma's going to go on in and you're going to still be out on the outside of the gate. Ain't nobody slipping in. Now, now Reverend, you was doing all right now. Now, you talking about that? Don't nobody want to hear nothing about no hell. You need to hear that there is a heaven and a hell. There is a God and a Satan. There are angels and are demons.
this stuff is real. I'm not, I'm not coming to that church anymore. I don't, I don't know about the heaven and hell stuff. See, you just trying to run away from God, and the next thing you know, you're going to be using the same phrase everybody else who deceived you use, my truth. Because you couldn't accept God's truth, so it's my truth. Tell me what your truth is. And I hear it, I'm like, that's wickedness, ain't it? No, that's my truth. I'm living out my truth. You're living out a lie. You've been listening to the devil and was deceived into thinking it was God. Thinking that they were wise, the Bible says they became fools. You know what a fool is? A fool says that there is no God. What are we going to do? This thing coming to an end. My heart went out for those people that were in the path of those tornadoes and the churches that were wrecked up and, 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 and all those people that died over weather. You, re you really think things are just going to return to normal? No. This is it. And for those of us who are in Goshen, we're just going to rejoice all the way through and be ready to pull people out of the dark and bring them to the marvelous light. I commission every world changer, both live here and on stream. I ordain you as soul winners and ministers of the gospel to go to the north, the south, the east, and the west to carry this gospel and to preach in season and out of season. I call you to the ministry of salvation to save souls from a burning hell. Whether you're 12 years old or 112 years old, you've been commissioned. Go ye therefore now into all ethnic groups and all nations. Preach the gospel, praise God. Win souls. And watch what God does in you. Your life ain't gonna never be the same again. You do understand that, right? You think we've just been hollering and screaming and laughing for no reason at all, but while all that stuff been going on, the Holy Ghost has been dropping some stuff on the inside of you. God tell you to feed the, the, the hungry, feed them. But then he told you, no, they can't get the food until I pray for them. Wait, let, let them use you. Let them use you. Let them use you. Pray and then obey. Go do it. Let's get them. We're world changers. He didn't call us world changers to just be sitting down and let wickedness take over. We are the light of the world. We are world changers. It's time to go out and make a mark that cannot be erased. Go get them. Go get them. Go get them, boy. Go get them. Get them at the gas station. Hallelujah. Do what you got to do. It's just, just have your antennas up. You'll be at that gas station and you'll pull up and the Lord, Lord will say, buy, buy, buy them a tank of gas. Well, Lord, why them? All right, Lord, I'm obey. Amen. Brother, I want to bless you. Can I pray for you? Are you born again? Well, you know, and he'll tell you all of the seeds that's been sown. And God use you at a gas station. What, 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 where, where are we at? Where are the Christians at? This is our time. We ought not be hiding in no closet nowhere. Everybody coming out the closet except Christians. Get out the closet. <laughs> Get out the closet. God can't use no closet Christians. <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 8. And the ESV says this, for at one time you were darkness. You remember that, don't you? You remember how dark it was? You remember, how, you remember I, I, I can't talk about you, I can talk about how stupid I used to be. Stupid. <laughs> Just did stupid stuff. Me and my neighbor was riding in my Volkswagen on 285 one time. 
this man jumped in front of us. <laughs> you remember Sylvia, right? Sylvia said, Cruff, you gonna let that man buck you out like that? <laughs> we from College Park, you gonna let that happen? I'm like, no, I ain't gonna let it happen. <laughs> I caught up, pulled up beside of that guy. That guy reached down like he pulled down something mean, but both of us ducked just like this. <laughs> <laughs> just stupid stuff. Stupid. <laughs> we went and got a big old cup like that and decided we were gonna celebrate because we were gonna be graduating soon. It was 100 degrees that day. We mixed Mad Dog, Red Lady 21, and Brass Monkey all in the same thing and dared anybody to drink it. Now, I wasn't that stupid. I'm like, this will knock me out. I don't even know where I am. I couldn't handle a good beer with more or less all that stuff. And Brass Monkey had a strange spirit to it. Every time I drank Brass Monkey, it was the next day. I'm like, what is, what's this? <laughs> it was always the next day, God dog. <laughs> don't act like you don't remember when you were in darkness. <laughs> Finally got out of high school, I'm in college. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I came here. My first stop was the, I want to know where the women's dorm was. <laughs> and I stood out in front of that dorm and I said, I am here. <laughs> Let the fun begin. <laughs> and this girl stuck her head out the window. She said, you devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I said, your mama! <laughs> I used to get high listening to Rick James and Tremaine Hawkins. <laughs> Rick James had a song I called Pass the Joint. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Tremaine Hawkins said, I'll never let you down, no more. So one of them was get ready for the joint, the other one was feeling bad that you did it. But we did it that time, but we promised this girl we were gonna come to church with her the next morning. You know, a bunch of football players didn't play around, but we got a time off, we maximized it. So we went to church and we were sitting there on the third row. I said, oh God, dog. I looked over at my friend Rock, I said, Rock, you, you, you smell liquor? He said, yeah, it's coming out of you. I said, it's coming out of you. <laughs> the priest or the preacher, he must have smelled it too. And he called us all down to the altar and began to lecture us about how we need to grow up and be young men of character and stay away from that evilness in that bottle. I'm like, Rob, what are you talking about? <laughs> it ain't no evenness in that bottle. It ain't nothing but fun in that bottle. I was dark. I couldn't see the light. But then one day, something just started stirring in me that I need to get my life right. I need, I need to, I need to get, I didn't know what I needed. So I had a friend who was born again because I thought he was weird. When he got saved, I'm like, bro, I don't even know what happened and you stay away from me. And I called him and I said, man, something going on with me. I'm, I, it's like I got like a demon on this side, an angel on this side, and I'm freaking out, man. I'm tripping. I don't know if it's the weed or what. I'm something going on. <laughs> he said, I know what's going on. So he came over. He led me to the Lord. He told me, he said, now here's a piece of paper. Write all your sins down. I said, I ain't writing all, ain't all my sins down. You write all yours down. I don't want you to know everything I done did. Because one of them might have been with your girlfriend. I don't know. 
Now, see, some of y'all tripping because you act like you done forgot what you used to be like. And I want you to know I haven't forgot where God has brought me from. And I'm just testifying here a little bit. Hallelujah on Simmons Drive in College Park, Georgia, right next to a cemetery. I lift my hands up in that little bedroom and I ask Jesus to come into my heart and to be my Lord and Savior. And Jesus saved me that day and darkness left me that day and the light of Jesus came. Hallelujah. And now I'm on my way to heaven and I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. And that's what he's calling for now. And maybe God will let you witness to somebody just like what you used to be like. Don't throw away your testimony. Don't throw it. Keep it in your pocket somewhere and say, oh, I know you because I was you. But let me tell you what happened to me. I was blind, but now I can see. Hallelujah. I didn't know what was going on, but now I know what's going on. I didn't know how a big a fool I was until the light came. He says, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. He said, walk as children of light. Can't do that without the word. My time's up. Do you get anything out of that? Out of <laughs> Walk as children of the light. Would you lift your hands up, those of you in the dome, those of you who are at home and doing a stream, would you lift your hands up just for a moment and just think about what I said? Just think about it. Think about your life. Think about where you are. Think about how God delivered you. Think about it. I tell you, God wants to use you. You're not here, you being here is not a mistake. You hearing what you heard today is not a mistake. The Holy Ghost said some stuff to you that I, that I would not come out of my mouth, but it came through your ears what he said. Now may the grace of God be upon you all. May the blessings of God overtake you. May the blessings prepare you for the path that you've never gone down before. And may he use you as the light in this world today that darkness will not win. Jesus is Lord and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Anoint those hands, Lord, that are lifted. Anoint those hands, anoint those bodies, anoint their minds, anoint their lives. Open doors that were never opened to them before. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you're here today, listen to him. If you're here today in this dome or through that screen and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you've never been born again, Somebody told you it was something you don't need to worry about. And I'm saying it's the thing you have to do. You don't want to die without having Jesus being the Lord of your life. Then bow your head and pray this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner. But right now I repent of all my sins. I receive the free gift of, of Jesus' forgiveness. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith, I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, you are saved right now, meaning if you were to die right now, you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. If you all prayed this prayer with me over the stream, I want you to text the keyword, I'm saved, that's one word, to 51555. Provide your name and your email address, and we'll send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. Now, let's conclude our worship with the giving of gifts. I am so grateful that we have an understanding of giving. I'm so grateful that I don't have to get up here and manipulate you all different kinds of ways to try to talk some money out your pocket. 
I'm so grateful that I get to give because of what Jesus has done for me. It is a part of my worship. It is a part of my adoration. It is a part of my honor to honor him for everything he's ever done for me. Everything he's ever done. And that's a lot. And so I get to give. I want to give. I'm motivated to give because of him. If you need an offering envelope, if you'll raise your hands, the ushers will put one in your hands. If you're at home, there's some instructions on the screen, including a QR code for your giving. If you want to text World Changes Space Amount to 74483 or call that number on your screen. If you want to mail in, there's the address. And if you want to go to the web where you can use your PayPal, you can do that as well. There are QR codes for those of you who are here and as you exit, there are also QR codes and, and uh, the information desk is up, so I don't know if they have anybody back there, but there are people out there that'll kind of help you to, to do that as well. I'm so excited about what God's gonna do with you. I see you doing miraculous things outside of the church house. I see family members getting born again and coming to Jesus and those who are saved surround and love on those who've been out there for so long. It's the prayers of the righteous that will avail much. I tell you the truth, God's gonna use you. There's anointing in your hands. You can lay hands on sick people and they'll get well. You can speak to mountains and they'll obey. You have authority to cast out devils. You can speak to things and they come to pass. All is well with you. I said, all is well with you. Amen. Let's just go ahead and receive the offering. <clears throat> yeah. There you go. Praise God. We're getting ready to have a, a little short altar call. Thank you guys for coming today and being a part of our services today. Taffy and I are so, so geeked up about being able to pastor you and to give you everything we got so that you can be encouraged and have enough to just win, 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 win. We want you to win, 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 win. And that's what's happening right now. And call those things that be not as though they were. If you're not win, 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 call things that be not as though they were. Win, 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 win. All is well. Now, if you're here today and you want to join World Changes Church International here in College Park, I want to give you that opportunity to do that. As I said before, maybe, I don't know how other pastors feel, but man, I, 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 I would love, we would love the opportunity to pastor you. We would love the opportunity to teach you and to avail you to the things that this church offers to help you because we believe if we can change the way you think, you, we can change the way you live in your life. If God's called you to become a part of this church today and you really believe that you're supposed to be here, if you'll get your Bibles and personal belongings and make your way down front. And for those of you who prayed that prayer of salvation, if you're here, if you can go ahead and make your way down. If you're on the stream and you wanna become a part of our e-church, because there's no way you can get to the one here in College Park, Georgia, you can become an e-member today. You can go to worldchanges.org and click join at the top of the page. You can text join WCCI, all one word, to 51555, and we will send you all the benefits of e-membership, including receiving today's sermon notes in your inbox, access to the e-church Facebook community group, and access to our virtual conferences and private e-members. We welcome all of you who have become members of e-church today. And we love you and appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. Praise God, touch one life, touch one life. Touch one life. You know, I just, I just believe that, it, what, what would happen if we just all just touch one life? One life this week, just one somebody.
Taff and I are believing God to put families back together, marriages back together. Some of you are going to start amazing businesses that are going to give you quick turnaround and you're going to know, oh my God, look at this, look at this. But don't forget him. When you experience success, don't forget God. Don't forget God. Don't forget to give him the glory and the praise and the thanksgiving for the things that he has done in your life. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> glory, 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 glory. The blessing is a real thing. And I want to release that blessing over your life right now. Father, I thank you for the power of the blessing that through Jesus Christ and our faith in him is available. And so I declare that each person at this altar, they are blessed today. They're blessed in everything that they do. They bless, they're blessed in everything you instruct them to do. And we praise you for their lives right now. In Jesus' name, and everybody say it, amen. amen. At this time, if you'll turn and follow this gentleman to the prayer room, they're gonna take you upstairs, get some information from you and be a blessing to you. And we just thank God for you. You'll never be the same again. Congregation, would you please stand at this time for the final blessing? Uh, again, if you have not uh, made plans to join us for Christmas, man, they're going all out. You do not want to miss it. It's going to be a, an amazing family time. And we try to keep all of our special holiday celebrations within that hour. And um, if, if, if for nothing else, it gets you up and get everybody dressed so you ain't waiting on nobody to come to dinner. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I declare the blessing of God over you and your house and your family. I pray that all is well with you. All is well with your marriages, your children. I declare that the angels of God watch over you. And I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. I thank God that all of the sorrow be gone, all of the sickness be gone. I declare that if any virus or sickness or germ touches your body, it will die instantly in the name of Jesus. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever, and everybody said, amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a great day.